Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. So glad that you're here to be a part of our Christmas Eve gathering. If you're a guest, friend, or family member of someone who's a regular part of our church family, especially want to welcome you and welcome all the kiddos who are in the room who are joining us. This is our whole church family all in one room night. That includes from the youngest of the Eagle Church family. So uh, kids, so glad you can be a part. And thanks to all the children's workers who serve so faithfully all year long. And we've got a little wiggle room, we call it, parents. So if you need to get the wiggles out, kids, we'll do our best to help keep the service moving along tonight. But if the kids get a little too wiggly, we've got a wiggle room where the service is being live streamed into. It's downstairs and that room's set up for you. And there's also some space out in the atrium. If you need some space out there, the service is streamed out, there, out that direction as well. Welcome to everyone joining us online. Got a lot of families traveling, some joining us via interstate, uh, headed somewhere or in airports or airplanes or gathering in kitchens, preparing all kinds of baked goods. Wherever you're at, we're glad you're taking this hour to pause and reflect on the significance of what this season is. All month long, we've been holding this question out before us. Where is that place of personal darkness in our lives where we're longing for the light of Christ's presence to come? And so whether you're a regular part of church or you haven't been a part of church in a really long time, here's, what we, here's a common ground for all of us. We're all, we've all got some personal battle, some personal place of darkness we're working through, and in some measure we're all longing for the light of Christ's presence to come and meet us there. And that's tonight. And so to help us do that, we have written a creed that we've been sharing through all, throughout the Advent season. And so this creed is a declaration on our church's behalf of what we believe as a church family. So I'd invite you to stand with me. It's up here on the screen. And let's just declare these truths together as we gather tonight. We are the church, the people of God. United with Jesus, the child who was born. We believe in the Father, whose plan it was that after years of silence, something new would break forth. We believe in the Christ, God's precious Son, who slipped into Bethlehem and made his dwelling among us. This baby changed everything foretold yet unexpected. Some waiting had ended, more waiting began. We believe in the Spirit given us by Jesus, through whom we receive hope, peace, joy, love. Receive these gifts, receive this child, having something to give comes first by receiving. If you're grateful for that story, put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Let's pray together. Lord, what a moment to just pause and stand in wonder and awe at the story of amazing love proclaimed tonight. Help us to internalize it in a fresh way. Speak to our hearts. You see where each one of us is tonight. May it be a personal word from the living God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So a couple of months ago, um, Lily was home on fall break, and we decided we we're going to do a Friday night football deal, see some friends play. And so on the way to the game, we were both hungry, you know, swing by Chick-fil-A because I'm convinced that the Department of Motor Vehicles should figure out how Chick-fil-A does their drive through and it might like change the DMV process, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the double drive through lane and how they've got that whole system down. I mean, usually you're in and out faster than any single drive through So we pull up to Chick-fil-A, the new one here in Whitestown. I love Chick-fil-A. I know that the story is an aberration on the norm. But anyway, we're sitting in the drive through and we're not moving, like at all, for several minutes. And I start looking around and I notice like none of the cars around me are moving in either lane. And I'm doing this, and I'm looking around, and, and then by the time I kind of glance at the situation, you know, Dad's kind of sizing up the situation. I'm looking to my left. Is there a way out to my left? It's planters and rocks and big curb that way. It's more cars this way. And I turn around, and it's like seven cars deep. So we're seven deep in. And I'm like, whew, still nothing. I mean, we're probably sitting there a good 10 minutes, and no one has moved. 
So in my head, clearly something is wrong, right? There's something going on. And so I turned to Lily. I said, Lily, we're going to get out of here. And she's like, Dad, what are you going to do? And I get out of the car. I get out of the car, and I go to the car behind me. And I walk up to him, and I look at him. I said, do you want to get out of here? And he's like, yeah, let's get out of here. He kind of like raised his fist. Let's do it. He rolls his window down. Let's do it. I go to the car over next to him. I said, hey, do you want to get out of here? Yeah, get out of here. It's like rippling through the like Chick-fil-A drive through We had like a little Whitestown riot going on right there, like double drive through lane. Everybody's like rolling their windows down, giving the fist up. Let's go. Let's get out of here. So I'm like, okay, we got a good plan. Well, my eyes glance to the first domino, like I'm going back and going, okay, it was the first car that's got to move several feet back there. And I notice it's one of those like oversized pickup trucks, like, men, it's the one you dream of having. Like it's the four by four that's so high off the ground, you know what I'm saying? And I'm looking to see if I can see the driver and the driver is so small, you can barely see her. She's barely above the steering wheel. And I kind of glance at her eyes as she realizes she's the first domino to back up. And she's giving me this look like the look of terror. Like, she's like, and so I walk back to the pickup and it's the extended cab, big thing. I walk up to her and she rolls the window down and she goes, I can't back this thing up. I go, it's okay, it's okay. She goes, would you mind, like, would you back it up for me? It's my husband's. I don't normally drive it. I was just trying to get some chicken nuggets for the kids. And I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. She goes, would you mind, like, just jumping in, like, backing it up? I can't get it out of here. I'm like, okay. So she opens the door. At this time, Lily decides, she's looking back at dad, and she gets mom on the phone. She gets Kendra on the phone, and she's like, hey, mom, guess what dad and I are doing at Chick-fil-A? And she's holding up, and she's like, what is dad doing? He goes, well, he's getting in someone else's vehicle right now. So I get inside the car, and it's a mom and two kids in the back. And as I'm sliding inside the car, the kids in the back go, mom, is this okay? He goes, like, stranger danger, like, stranger danger, stranger danger. And I, as I get, I turn to kind of go, I'm going to back it up. So I look over, and I look at the kids in the back seat, and I go, I go, kids, don't, it's going to be okay. Don't worry. And they both go, like that. They're like, Shh. They're like. It was a scene out of a movie. I back this big old thing up and I back it up. And she goes, can you like back it like all the way up? So all I got to do is go like straight out of here. So we're doing like a three point turn with this thing. I get her sent. She's the first domino out of this thing, right? So I jump out of the car. She goes, this big four by four pulls away. And I kid you not, it was like the parting of the Red Sea there at the Chick-fil-A drive through it was like reverse drive-through flow. I mean, just boom, 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 boom. And everybody on the way out was like honking their horn. Woo! We never did get our Chick-fil-A, did we, Lily, that night? So. so the emotion that wells up right there in that moment, the, the response from the heart, when you think you're like trapped, you think there's no way out, and you realize there is a way out, and you're out, like that right there? There's a word that the Jewish people would use to describe that, and it's going to be the word for the night. It's called simcha. Say it with me. Simcha. Okay, you can do better than that. Simcha. It's the Hebrew word for joy. It's what the Jews would have used to describe Christmas. They would have declared Christmas Simcha, the announcement, the news. And so for the next few minutes, I just want to pull out three phrases from the text that Mark and Angie and their family read as they lit our Advent candles for us. And the text from Luke 2 is a declaration and it's announcement. Three phrases from the announcement that kind of form a bridge from that day to this day under the banner of a personal moment of simcha for anyone who embraces it. So the first phrase, did you catch it when Mark was reading it? It's Luke 2 verse 10. It says, an angel said to them. Now who's the them? It's shepherds. It's everyday people going about their ordinary lives. That's you and me. 
It's tonight. It's, it's everyday ordinary people going about our lives. And, and here we are, a, a declaration. News is given. Here's the news. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. That's the first phrase. Good news of great joy. You know, there's some news way beyond Chick-fil-A drive through type news. There's some news that just kind of sparks a reflex, a reflex reaction. Like you don't even have to work for it. The news just brings forth joy. Like when I run into students at the end of the semester, students, when I see you and I ask about how finals week's going, and I hear that one of the professors canceled their Friday final and said you could, have, you could start Christmas break early, do I have to tell those students to be like, great joy? No. I mean, they think Jesus is coming back on that Friday. Like, it's great. It's good news. The prof canceled the final. We get to start break early. Woohoo! Simcha. Well, this past Saturday night, I had some friends have a personal Simcha moment. I have a good friend named Parks who had been spending weeks and weeks planning for this Saturday night. I mean, he had set it all up, the setting, the place. He had all the friends and family brought in from out of town because it was his night that he had prepared to get down on one knee and propose to his girlfriend, Caroline. Here's a picture in that scene from Saturday night. So... Do you see Caroline's face there? That's actually the moment. He paid paid off some photographer to hide behind some trash can somewhere and like pop up and take the shot. That's a literally unfiltered moment. That's Caroline Simcha right there. And by the way, for Park, Simcha is when she said yes. You know, that's super helpful. And then it's this huge relief, right, guys, when you've just been working to get the whole thing orchestrated and it all came together. And they were all there, and she said yes, and it was a great moment. I saw him later. He was just so happy. He was just, it was good news that brings great joy. That's this. Or or maybe it was recently, you know, it's towards the end of the year. Maybe your boss sat down with you and said, I've got good news. You're going to get, like, an unexpected bonus in your paycheck. Well, that brings great joy. You're like, that's great. Or maybe it was you went to a doctor's appointment, and the doctor said the words you've been waiting to hear. It's in remission. You're cured. You're healed. Go live your life. That's good news. That brings great joy. Well, tonight, the news being announced, it kind of puts good news on a whole new shelf. This is a new shelf for good news. Tonight, the announcement that the angel brings Ordinary people living their everyday lives is today, right? So the good news brings great joy. And then what's the news? The next phrase, verse 11, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. That's that's good news on a whole new shelf. It's especially good news if you know in your heart of hearts, you're like, Man, I know I'm lost. I know I'm broken. I know I've got shattered places and broken places. I mean, I know it. Then you just cling to a Savior. You're looking for the announcement of a Savior. This is the news that the people of God have been longing and waiting and praying and yearning for. For centuries, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Redeemer, the Savior, the one who can restore and rebuild and heal. He's come. The Savior has come. It's good news at a whole new level. And it springs forth great joy. You don't have to command the people to have great joy. It's just good news that brings forth Simcha. Because today a Savior is born. Now, if you're kind of going through life and you're fairly comfortable running your life the way you want to run it, and you feel pretty confident that you can handle whatever life throws at you, then Christmas just kind of lands in the place of a holiday season. But for the rest of us who recognize that we're not nearly as in control as we think we are, and when you kind of finally come to the place where you recognize you're not so good at like running your life anyway, like you can make a mess of things pretty easy, like you're usually, you're like, that close to kind of driving it off a cliff most of the time. And like when you recognize like that you're kind of at the end of yourself, that you're not strong enough or smart enough to kind of get through everything that you're going to be going through, when you recognize that, then tonight good news brings great joy is that a Savior is born. 
And he has a name, Isaiah 9 says, a people living in darkness who know they've got stuff of darkness. A great light has appeared. And he's called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The light of the world has come to a people who've been caught up in darkness. Church, that's good news. And that brings Simcha-type joy in response because tonight, today, a Savior has been born. And you say, well, what is his name? This is the third phrase of the story. The third phrase tells us his name. Did you catch it at the end of verse 11? He is Christ the Lord. The Savior has a name. His name is Jesus, and he is the Lord. You know, when that announcement came for Jesus outside, you know, outside of Bethlehem in that manger, there were a lot of people using the title Lord and King. Caesar was proclaiming to be Lord and King. Herod was proclaiming to be Lord and King. Rome was proclaiming to be Lord and King. But do you want to know something tonight? Here we are 2,000 years removed from that birth. Do you know tonight 2 billion people in 190 nations are gathering and lighting candles and singing songs and proclaiming this story? We're not lighting candles in the memory of Herod. We're not singing songs about Caesar. We're not telling stories about the Roman Empire. Tonight is Jesus of Nazareth's night. A Savior has been born to you, and he is Christ the Lord, capital L. He is the King, capital K, of all those kings, and he's the Lord, capital L, of all those lords. This is that Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the light of the world. He's the hope for your despair. He's the joy, the grace for your brokenness. He, he is everything of love that your heart has been searching for. He is Christ the Lord, and he's been born, and he's here, and he's present. And the people respond with Semcha. No matter what 2019 has been like, we all come from a wide array of experiences this year. Some of you walk in here in some of the deepest valleys and darkest days you've ever gone through in your life. And into that space, an angel comes and he proclaims like he did to the shepherds. He says to the shepherds, you might want to step off your camel for this one. You might want to lay down your staff for this one. I've got some news that you really, a whole new shelf for good news. A Savior, <laughs> he's born today into that dark place. Or maybe tonight finds you riding a wave of, it's the mountaintop experience of mountaintop experiences of your life, or perhaps you're on the plateaus of the ordinary in between. Every single one of us into that space tonight an announcement of good news that brings great joy. A Savior has been born, and he has a name, Christ the Lord. And the interesting thing about the whole declaration in Luke 2 is that reality stands independent of any of our personal belief in it. Jesus of Nazareth was born to a virgin named Mary on the outskirts of Bethlehem 2,000 plus years ago. That's historical fact. This announcement in Luke 2 isn't just some nice church myth thing that we talk about on Christmas Eve. This is a declaration of reality, an event that occurred in history. And our personal belief or response in it doesn't change the effect of it. But interestingly enough, as you follow the storyline in the Gospels, you can't remain neutral to the light. This announcement, it calls forth for a decision, a response. You can't just kind of be at this announcement and look to, ah, I'll take it or leave it. You know, uh, I'm not sure. No, it's calling for a response. This kind of announcement, this kind of news. And this is the point when a response gets personal. And the word for the response is this. What do you do with this kind of a news? You simply receive it. That's all you can do. 
You receive this announcement. You receive this news. You receive this Savior. You receive this light. You step off the treadmill of the achiever, trying to achieve and accomplish the life the way you thought you wanted to achieve and accomplish it. You step off that treadmill and you adopt the posture of a receiver and you receive the life from Jesus that you really have always been looking for. You, may not, you might not have had the name, but tonight he puts a name to it. It's Jesus Christ the Lord. That's who you've been looking for. So Lily and I go to the football game. Three plus hours later, we drive back. We're on our way back home. Guess what we drive by? The same Chick-fil-A. Guess what we see? I snapped a picture of the Chick-fil-A drive through Brake lights, cars stacked up three hours later. I said to Lily, I said, you think that's the same vehicles that have been sitting there the whole time? <laughs> By the way, a few days later, I go in, I was, I was in with some friends, and I asked the manager on duty, I said, hey, I was telling a little bit about my story. They were cracking up about it. They said that they had a they had a food breakdown that night. They had like a food processing breakdown, he called it. I said, well, put it in layman's terms. He said, our fryer, our cooker shut down. We couldn't cook any chicken. He said, the reason you weren't moving in the line is you couldn't get any chicken. I go, that'd be a problem, you know? <laughs> so he said, it's a good thing you came up with your parting the Red Sea thing because you'd been sitting there for a long time. But I thought, you know, when I saw that picture of the, of the drive through several hours later, isn't that such a commentary on life? Sometimes in life, you just get gridlocked. You just feel trapped in. You're not quite sure how you got to where you're at, and you're not quite sure the way out. <laughs> and tonight, tonight, you're like the shepherds, ordinary people living everyday lives, and an angel comes to you, and he says, hey, <laughs> I've got really good news, like good news on a whole new shelf. That's going to bring great joy. If you internalize, it's going to bring great, it's going to be Simcha. What is it? Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born, and he has a name. He is Christ the Lord. What do I do with that news? You just receive it. Receive it. So a few weeks ago, the team was working on Bryce and Justin and Hunter got together, and kind of receive has been our theme for the whole month. And they spent a few weeks, and they wrote this song that Jana's going to sing to you. So it's the first time it's been performed, and it's kind of under this banner. I really want you to pay attention to the lyrics, and at the end of the song, I'm going to come up and lead us through a prayer, and the prayer is going to be centered on this. It's going to give you an opportunity to respond and receive and simply internalize what it is you feel like God is speaking to you tonight. Receive this gift. Let's pray together. Father, we just pause in this moment and maybe you've come in tonight and you know that there hasn't been a personal receive moment for you. Christmas has just kind of been maybe seasonal, but right here, right now, in this moment, you can just open up your heart with open heart and open hand. Say, Jesus, save me. I hear the announcement of the good news. I want you to be my Savior, you to be my Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Teach me how to live my life. I want my life to count for you. Bring the light of your presence into my places of personal darkness. Just call out to him right where you are. Or maybe tonight it's a moment where you can remember a time when you've prayed a prayer like that, you've made a commitment like that, but if you were honest, there's been some wandering and some straying and some distraction, and you've drifted a long ways from where you want to be, and just decide right now. You can just say, Jesus, I want to come home. I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to come straight back to you, and you'll see his face has always been turned towards you in love. You just turn and say, Jesus, I want to come home. I want to come back to my roots. I want to 
want to grow in my relationship with you. Meet me. Send the light of your presence into my places of darkness now. Just reach out to him. Say, meet me there. And then just collectively, Lord, we just want to say to you tonight that we join uh, the shepherds, we join the angels, we join that gathering in the field when there was the announcement of good news. And I pray by your spirit, you would bring forth shimcha, just bring it forth. Good news that brings great joy that you would come for us. Be our peace, be our hope, be our joy, be our love. Meet us right where we are. We receive. We open up our hands and our hearts and we receive life from you now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So church, this is the night when you can trust. Though no matter what path you take walking out of here, Tonight, trust this, you'll be walking toward the light. The light of the world has come. May the light of his presence meet you very personally during this season. May you have a tremendous sense of Emmanuel, God, with you. From the Simpson family to your family, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Amen. Stick around with us if you'd like. We've got some hot chocolate and cookies out in the atrium. Thanks for being a part of our service. Merry Christmas, everybody.